What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets, Action Network's daily NBA betting podcast. We're in the workshop Wednesday, NBA slate, so you know who's with me. AC Analytics capper Albert Wynn, and of course, J Money is money. Always on a Wednesday, I am your host, Sean Little. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. You know the deal. We give you the play, we give you the cap, we get you guys out of here. AC Analytics capper, what are you looking at for the best bet? On a Wednesday. I'll keep it short and simple. I like Dallas Mavericks plus one and a half. Jay Money is money. What is your best bet for the Wednesday NBA slate? Yeah, we're going to the murky waters of Detroit. I like the Pistons on the money line, minus 130. And I'm going to pass on the slate. I was in the lab. I was in the workshop, I should say. And I've been looking for hours. I was going through things. I could feel myself reaching. So I'm going to pass on the Wednesday slate. Nothing I liked at all, actually. And we'll be back on a Thursday. All right, AC, analytics capper. I'm coming back to you. You're going with the hometown squad. Dallas Mavericks, Big D, as you laid it out, plus one and a half against the Suns, who are starting to put it together a little bit, just like Jay Money laid out to us. He said the Suns are going to start to heat up and start to stack up some W's very, very soon. They've now won six in a row. Why are you back in Dallas here at home, plus one and a half? Yeah, my guy Jay read it perfectly. He started buying Phoenix when they were low. Now they're no longer low. I think they're they're kind of valued correctly. They've won six straight games, Sean, but they're only they've only covered two of those games. So it's not like they're blowing out teams. And I know uh, you know spread versus just winning outright doesn't tell the whole story. But the spread does tell you like the market expectation of that team. And the Suns, even though they're winning, they're not covering. For example, they barely beat the Bulls, required a game winner yesterday by Durant. And on the other side, Dallas, they've been going through a lot of injuries. I know Luka's been in in and out of the lineup. Um, But with that being said, they're just not playing really good. They have zero defense. If Derek Lively is not in there, it's basically a layup drill for the other team. And they can't defend their, their defensive glass. But this is a great spot, in my opinion. They just lost to the Lakers. They just lost to the Boston Celtics. Now they're playing another marquee, marquee team at home. Um, they moved this start time up. It was supposed to be at 9. Now it's at 7.30 for ABC. So the the building's going to be rocking. I like the Mavericks as the short underdog, not only to cover, but to get the outright win. Looking at the injury report, Luka Doncic is questionable at the moment. Kyrie Irving also questionable. Dante Exum. Also questionable, so is Seth Curry. Stay tuned there. As AC laid out, I expect the big dogs to go in a a primetime spot like this against the Phoenix Suns. As of late, I guess I should say all season, the Suns, as a cover, have been horrendous at home. 17-7-17-1 ATS at home. On the road, they are 9-9. And And as a favorite, though, they are 11-19-1 ATS. So that's a poor number. J money is money is our, do you agree with AC? Cause you did lay it out for us a couple weeks ago. Said, look, you're going to have to start buying on the suns here pretty soon. They are going to start winning games. Covering has been a different story. Do you think the suns are being priced correctly? What do you think about this spot in Dallas here? Yeah, I think they're being priced correctly. Obviously they got a little bit of baked into the line that Kyrie and Luke are questionable, which I do think they play. I don't really even know why they're on the injury report. I mean, Luca with a sore back, like, come on, man, get out of here. He's playing versus Devin Booker and the Suns. Like I think sometimes they just throw these guys on the injury report, just kind of like to mess with us better. But whatever. I won't even uh, really get into that. But Mavs are coming off back to back losses here. They've actually owned the Suns. They've been playing the Suns really tough. They're seven and three straight up, eight and two against the spread last ten meetings. Um uh, I mean, the Suns, they'll do well. Like, I think this is an over type of game. Two offensive teams that don't play a ton of defense here. So, um, I think both teams will have success scoring here. Obviously, the Suns have, have, have I believe, back-to-back games where they had to come back from down uh, 20 points. Maybe not versus the Pacers, um, but I know they game versus the Kings. They came back down from 20 points and the game versus the Bulls. So, what the uh, Suns have been doing, they've been coming out really slow and turning turn it on in the fourth quarter. Maybe the Mavs in the first half here is also a look here. Um, I expect 
expect them to come back off, come back out after a, a loss at the house to come out and uh, come out and play well. So I'd be looking towards Mavs in the first half, and I'd be looking towards an over spot here. It's a it's a high total, but these are two great offensive teams, um, and neither team really just like or plays the physical style of basketball. It's all up and down finesse uh, type of scoring. So I think this is an over type of game here. Another interesting note, AC. Road team has covered the spread in five of the last six games between the Suns and the Mavericks, similar to what Jay just laid out. So that is in favor of the Suns in this spot. Also, going against what Jay Money just laid out a bit, eight of 12 last home games in Dallas have gone under the total. AC, Kevin Durant has had five plus assists on the road as a favorite. That's a big number on a prop type side. Any other comments before we move away from this game? It does feel like my, my – this was the only game that I thought was had any type of edge in it whatsoever across the board. I think the, the revenge spot angle of Phoenix is starting to stack up wins. It seems like breaks are starting to come their way a little bit. Kevin Durant is playing with an edge as of late. And Phoenix – has been owned by Dallas. That Luka Doncic ghost is there and it is real. It's very coin flippy to me. That was kind of where I was across the board where I didn't really see anything that jumped out. Any other comments, AC, before we move over to Jay Money's play? Yeah, a couple comments. I'm personally going to be on the triple play here. So first quarter, first half, full game. I do think the full game is – is is a safer play for the best best bet because the Suns are coming off a game winner. Um, that's a coin flip ending already in, in that in that respect. And then Jay mentioned something very sharp is the over. I mean, Dallas first half overs have been a wagon all season long. I think they're 26 and nine, I think first half overs. So um, I agree with that. Second half, I think it gets a little more tight. I think they're going to take more of the 24-second shot clock and really play possession by possession. Because I think I think we all agree if this game is close towards the fourth quarter, they're going to play this close to the playoff game just because they don't like each other. So mm-hmm. um, I like the first half total if we're going to be on the total. And then Mavericks always, in my opinion. All right, we'll leave that there. J Money is money. We called them the murky waters since we've been back in some of the, the bad teams across the board in the NBA. But like we always say, sometimes the murky waters are where the W's are. Sometimes you got to go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. J money is money. Why are you taking the Pistons here on the money line? Yeah, well, first off, you got a four and thirty-nine team that's laying points over a ten and thirty-one <laughs> team. So um, that's something for that sound like <laughs> AC uh, right there. But I like the Pistons this spot. I mean, don't look now. This team has covered five straight games, and they've been playing some top. Now, I'm not going to say that the Bucs are our top-tier team, but right now they are sitting top three in the East over there, and they just played them really tight both games. The first game in Milwaukee, I mean, the first game versus Milwaukee at Dallas, they could have beat the Bucs outright in that game as 13-point underdogs. They played the Timberwolves really tight as well, lost by seven in that one. So uh, they've been catching point. Now, obviously, they're land points here, but I expect them to win this game. Hornets are coming off uh, – let me see. They're coming off a, a win here. I was going to say back-to-back, but they lost versus Philadelphia this team is one and eight uh straight up after a win so uh, we know that the Hornets aren't really interested in winning a ton of games Pistons hadn't won in a while I think they go out loud for this one um they this is the first time that they won't have anybody on the injury report now I don't necessarily like when the star player comes back I do think that's a phase fight but uh some tells me that the Pistons come out here with the win at the house and I think the Hornets um I think they'll be perfectly fine with dropping this game to the Detroit Pistons so I'm on the Pistons on the money line can't give you a ton of things this is really just like a field type of play I think the Pistons win this game yeah the 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 uh the hornets are coming off a w that's the cat game you know what i'm saying cat yeah. was going crazy and then and then ran <laughs> and then shot him and then shot the timberwolves off the floor so that was a big win and sean the yeah. wolves were supposed to win that game as well last two minute report came out cat got fouled twice on that last um on that last position there so the hornets are coming off a game where they weren't supposed to win they AC, outscored Minnesota. Yeah, they outscored Minnesota 36 18 in that fourth quarter. So even with Cat 62, I think he had 62 with like 10 minutes left and didn't score anything after that, which is crazy to think about. But I agree with Jay here. I mean, the team here is 4 39 in their favor. Uh, 
they're going to have all their horses back. Cade, Boyan, Jaden Ivey's been playing a lot better. Duran is playing a lot better. So, um, and then on the other side, Charlotte's going to be missing their point guard, right? They just made a trade for Kyle Lowry. So we know Terry Rozier is not going to be in the lineup. So there's going to be some adjustment period there. But I agree with Jay. Like, this is one of those weird, murky water spots where the potentially the worst team or the worst record team in the NBA is not only favored, but they're three point favorites. It's almost like the, the books are asking you to take the dog here, right? So I, I like, I like the, I like the look. Yeah, the Lamelo Ball's been back. He's been playing well. Brandon Miller's actually been playing really well, but still, uh, Gordon Hayward is out. Still, Mark Williams out for Charlotte. Um, I've said on multiple occasions, I think Charlotte's the worst team in the NBA. I don't even think Detroit's the worst team in the NBA. So. If you're going to back a team, I backed Charlotte the other night against San Antonio without Wemby, and Devin Vassell hit a one-legged floater to not from three to not to cover, so the Hornets couldn't cover that game. But that was a very specific spot that I was getting behind the Hornets. Lamelo had just played San Antonio three or four games prior. He had 28. He got to the line a bunch, had success there, and they had no victor. They just they just eat that out. Now they go and get a very unique spot where they beat the Timberwolves where essentially the Timberwolves stopped playing ball and we're trying to get cat yep. as many buckets and many looks as possible, which didn't work out well. Chris Finch was furious about that. So only way I could look in this game is at the Pistons. So and, and, and one other thing, Sean and Jay, I think with Cade's recent injury, like it allowed other players to shine, right? We knew Jaden mm-hmm. Ivey could play a lot better. And I think because he became the number one option during those games, he's going to have confidence. And I think the biggest thing with Cade's return is there's no Killian Hayes. Less Killian Hayes, <laughs> the better for Detroit. So I like it. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's no argument for me on uh, the Killian Hayes touches, but <laughs> that comes. <laughs> yeah, Killian, there. you don't got it. You know, you, you know, you play a pickup, Jay, and you look one way. You're like, nah, I'm gonna go ahead. Nah. I'm gonna go ahead and go left. I, he's not even gonna be on my team. I ain't even picking him up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So he's gonna be on the sidelines watching the game. Yeah, you see, is dead on. No more. The less Killian Hayes, the better. That's for sure. So I just want to go through what I was thinking in my thought process on passing. I was going through the slate, and I could even go through game by game. Minnesota at Washington, a double-digit number with with the game that they're coming off. Chris Finch is going to have those dudes fired up, but I think that's still too big of a number in that spot. We just talked about Detroit and Charlotte. Detroit is the side, but I think it's still very, very coin flip. I didn't really find too much of an edge there. Miami is going to – is Terry going to play? How is that going to shake out? New roster, no Kyle Larry. How is all that going to go? I don't know, so I'm not looking at that. Of course, Milwaukee now has a new coach. Allegedly, it's Doc Rivers, according to CNN. That was confirmed this evening. We'll see what shakes there. But Cleveland has been playing really well on the defensive end as well. So you're going to tell me they got a whole bunch of off the sh- off the court shit going on. Now you got to play a defense first team in Cleveland that could slow up. And that has, of course, a trigger man, Donovan Mitchell, that can go crazy and start competing. And then you have to cover by margin by A+. plus. Uh, that, that's sketchy. So I don't need to go through the whole slate, but I just didn't find anything I liked. There wasn't a lot of props up. So instead of giving you guys a, a lukewarm-ass play that I didn't feel really great about, that I wasn't going to bet myself, I thought I'd pass and then come back tomorrow. So that's where we're at on that. To recap, J Money is money. Pistons money line minus 130 AC analytics capper is on the Dallas Mavericks plus one and a half. I'm going to pass until Thursday. Anything else before we get out of here, fellas? That's it for me. Go Pistons. Yeah, go, go Pistons. Go Mavs. Let's cash some tickets. 4J money is money for Albert. Win AC, the analytics capper. I am Sean Little. We will see y'all next time. We are presented by Bet MGM, the King of Sportsbooks. Go download the Action Network app. Everything you need to know about everything coming up for NFL Championship Sunday is in there as well. The boys have been locked in across the board until tomorrow, and we will be back tomorrow. Let's get buckets, baby. We'll see y'all.